on this week's episode of Taking a Walk with Buzz Knight. Hey, Wally Bryan here, and I am having the most delightful day taking a walk on the paths around Walden Pond out in Concord, and I'm with Buzz Knight. It doesn't get any better than this. Here's Buzz. One of the many joys of taking a walk is doing so with a friend, someone who you truly enjoy hanging with, someone special. It's even better when it's at a location that is special. Today, I'm taking a walk. I'm here at Walden Pond with the one, the only, Wally Brine, radio icon, salt of the earth, storyteller, and friend. Wally, I am so excited to be here taking a walk with you at Walden Pond. Oh, God, isn't this wonderful? My God. Look at this. You know, I could sprain both ankles on this path today. <laughs> you don't Jeez. want that to happen. This is a, this is a treacherous studio you got here. <laughs> it's such a beautiful place, but I did pick one of the more rugged paths here. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Jeez. Wally, how are you, my friend? Oh, I'm great. I am great. And you know, I've really enjoyed the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> What was the most fun about it? Well, I never get sick, you know, because I wear a mask most of the time. Um, and I, I probably many, many people have experienced this. We don't get colds anymore. Right. Because we're wearing masks when we go into any place. You know, I don't have one out here. I don't wear one. But, you know, go to a, if, if you go to a restaurant, which my wife is very nervous about doing so we don't do that very often unless it's outdoor seating right but even going into a walmart or you know whatever you you got a mask on and uh, i think it's really made us a healthier community well it's good for people who uh you know are shut-ins because they don't have to do anything different (laughs) right very good point that's a good point yeah but yeah it's uh and fun by the way Remember fun? I remember fun, yeah. yeah. But what was your original question? I kind of got you off I track. I just asked how just, you were. Well, how I am, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm retired. Um, for those of you listening in Czechoslovakia, I used to be on the radio. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was a five-day-a-week, uh, you know, early morning sh- job. and It was a grind. It was a grind, but not that bad. I mean, I don't want people feeling sorry for me. Um, it wasn't that bad, but it, the, the, the hours were not particularly good. But, um, yeah, so it's nice to be able to sleep in a bit. What's an average day look like for you? Um, well, I, you know, I used to wake up or get up at 2.30 in the morning. So now I don't get up till six, and people think six. Geez, that's still really early. Yeah. Well, no, not when you've been getting up at two thirty. Six right. is really sleeping in. Yeah. So I get up at six. I um, I'm a huge sports fan. Okay. So I have um, we have a network in Boston, New England Sports Network, Nesson. You know, yep. they do the Bruins games and Celts games and Red Sox games. So they have this 30-minute recap of the previous day's sports every morning. They just keep repeating it starting at 6 o'clock. So I always watch that. And uh, I'm able to stay up to speed on what's going on with my favorite teams. And then, so what happens after that? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, usually I'll have some breakfast you know, I I have, uh, my wife is a fabulous shopper. She goes to the grocery store every week and stocks up on all kinds of stuff. Healthy stuff, too. Well, a lot of it is, yes, yeah. which is not my thing, really. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's got the yogurt and the flaxseed, <laughs> you know, all kinds of um, things that I n- never used to eat. Right. But I'm uh, trying to be good now. You look fabulous, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. Do you think so, really? Very svelte. Oh, that's not true. Uh, boyish, I might say. Boyish. Well, I don't know about that. 
But um, and you got a nice haircut for me too. I did. I, I wanted to look good on the microphone. There you go. So uh, yeah, I got cleaned up quite a bit. All right. So back to your day. So yeah. So the rest of the day. That? Well, you know, I try to do one thing a day, and I think I've told you this before. Yes, I love this. I try to do. This was my wife uh, came up with this. You should try to do one thing a day. So, you know. <laughs> I could hear her saying that to you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, some days I'll empty the dishwasher. And I'll check off one thing a day. And then, um, <laughs> the uh, you know, or, you know, clean out uh, some stuff in the garage. Or uh, take the car and get it washed. So, you know. <laughs> One of my favorite <laughs> depictions of that that you captured uh, in photo that I I love if I just want to put a smile on my face, um, you know, I oh, look at the picture and um, it's you with a toilet seat with your head through the center of it and you said that was your one thing for the day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I think we should mention that my wife is in the real estate business, and occasionally she uh, has me help her move things around in a property that she's listed or whatever. So sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes there's a little heavy lifting. Not which, too bad. Which path here do you think we should uh, go down here at the Walden Pond? We're going, this is Woods Path. Does that sound like yeah, a good place fine. to go? Yeah, that sounds fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, what would you think Henry David Thoreau would have gone, yeah, 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 that's that's fine, as he was walking here? Yes, Henry David Thoreau. I, I don't know if your listeners know about Henry David Thoreau, but he actually had a cabin here. Yep. And a little, tiny, they've recreated it to whatever his specs were. And uh, it, it had room for a bed, like a little wood stove, and and he would uh, he would stay there for weeks and write. And uh, play his guitar, and Don Henley would come over, and <laughs> they would compose things. It was, uh, yeah, he was an interesting guy. Very interesting, very thoughtful, and, yeah. you know, walking and thoughtfulness and <laughs> mindfulness all go hand in hand. I know. As the, as the name Wally Bryan and the mere mention of Wally Bryan goes with <laughs> mindfulness, yeah, right. thoughtfulness, yeah. and all those things. Yeah. So uh, let me let me give you a little bit more about my day, though. Okay. This, so, this, uh, the podcast has a, you know, no end date, so we're... Oh, okay. I, I can hear the whole... I can hear literally like a travel log your day. A lot of times I will get up, have my breakfast... And then, and this counts as my one thing a day, yep. I put the cushions out on the patio. <laughs> <laughs> I, I roll up the umbrella, put the cushions out, and uh, I have a motorcycle, and that's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I have several rules about the motorcycle. Number one, it's not the greatest thing uh, in the hot summer. Right. Because it's just too uncomfortable. Yep. So the best time to ride... Especially with your shirt off as you're riding. <laughs> yes. The best time, I think, is spring and fall. I mean, like, in the fall when the leaves are starting oh. to change. And yeah. you go for a motorcycle ride, oh, my God, it's fantastic. Yep. And usually there's a frap at the end of the oh. road. <laughs> that, that uh, you know... A Bedford so Farms too. frap. Yes. Right? Yes. Oh. So, you know, there's that. And then um, I have a boat down in Rhode Island that uh, my dad had purchased and I inherited. And uh, we go boating quite a bit. Yep. Not, not a lot, I guess, but, you know, weekends when we can get down there. See, my wife's still working. So that curtails a lot of uh, trips to Rhode Island. Well, you find a way. I find a way. Yeah. I mean, I hate to go down there and have fun without her. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a guy's got to do what he has to do. Occasionally it happens, yeah. 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 So, you know, there's that. Let's see, what else do I do? Um, you know, it, the, 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 we joke about the pandemic, which isn't funny, but um, that's really curtailed a lot of the things that you can do. I know. So I don't, I'm probably, once this thing is over, if ever... I mean, supposedly it'll end at some point. Um, there's other things that I have on my wish list. You'll but, travel. 
Yes, yeah. love to travel. Love to travel. That's awesome. But I do feel one of the hidden benefits, I, I hate to put it that way, of the pandemic <laughs> has been, uh, you know, we live in such a beautiful area, you know, whether it be your estate that you have in Massachusetts or your Rhode Island estate. A that state? You have. A I state. don't, that's a little <laughs> highbrow, but yes. Okay. But we do seriously live in this amazing amazing part of the country and i know for me personally i rediscovered or discovered new places to go to to walk now having two dogs yeah. you know it's 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 been a joy really and then uh the other joy has just been um i don't know it feels like there's been more of an influx of nature i, I don't yes. know why no, i don't know I agree it's because with there was less traffic or something like that but um, the, the more influx of nature has been truly delightful as well. So I think there's things, you know, finding or rediscovering beautiful places such as Walden Pond. Um, and I know they've experienced, uh, the Walden Woods Project people, a, uh, a boom in you know, attendance. Good. All this. I did not know that. Yeah. So even though they've had to shut down the facility itself, they still offer a lot online and all of that. So I think, you know, um, I think it's, it's a byproduct. That's yeah. Happened for sure. Well, you know, the other, um, the other thing that I do quite often, uh, now is bicycle riding. And, um, as is the case here, I, I've been over here on my bicycle. I'm not, I don't live that far from here. Um, but, uh, again, like on a motorcycle, when you're out on a bicycle and the smells that you go through on a bike ride, it's just, it's awakening. It is. It is. It really is. It's really a cool thing. And the leaves, of course, will be really starting to kick up their aroma in the fall and that'll be great. One of the things I love about Wally (laughs) is how he tells a story and literally you 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 light up when you tell a story. <laughs> really? You do. It's you don't even realize it. So, what's the earliest you remember somebody telling you a story? Oh wow! Well, um, clearly it would have been my mother. Of, oh, I know what it was. I can actually answer this. Um, my dad grew up in Arlington, Massachusetts, which is just outside of Boston, maybe. 10 miles. I don't think it'd be more than that. And uh, he lived in, in Arlington Heights. And he's, his brother, his older brother, uh, used to go out into the woods because back then development hadn't, we're talking 1930s, 1920s probably. Um, the, the Arlington was still a pretty small community. And his brother would go out looking for firewood for the uh, family uh, wood stove in the kitchen. And uh, they would, his brother would go out first, and uh, my father was maybe still in school a little later because he was younger. And then he would go out, and at the edge of the woods, this is the perfect place to do, oh, (laughs) there's the traffic reporter. (laughs) He's not going to see much here. Um, he would go and he would stand at the ed, uh, edge of the woods and my, his brother would be up in a tree with a saw and he'd be sawing away. And they had this call that they used to do like, Ooh, ah! you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and my father used to tell me this story when I was a little kid. You know, it was a bedtime story. Yep. And um, I could visualize his, my uncle, his brother, up in a tree with the saw and my father wandering through trying to find him. And um, I, I've never forgotten that story. That, was, that had a big impact on me. I know it's pretty simple, but, you know, I knew both characters in the story. And, yeah. and, it, and it's, it's visual, too. Yes. It's, you, yes. Could, you could see it uh, happening in, in real time, almost, mm. which is the beauty of it. Um, I'd like to make a motion here that one of the greatest <laughs> stories that that you've told, you can tell a version of it if you like, or it's up to you. I don't want to embarrass you, but uh, this Tiffany story oh, is, 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 is a legendary story, 
And I'm, my motion uh, that I'm going to make here <laughs> is that uh, "Twas the Night Before Christmas" gets replaced by the Tiffany story. What do you really? th- What do you think of that? Sure, I sure. You're okay yes. with that? I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do so you want me to tell it right now? Sure. Why not? Okay. Um, Why not? All right. There's I no was, better uh, time. <laughs> I was working in Boston at the Prudential Tower. We were getting close to Christmas. I wanted to get my wife a Christmas present, something nice, you know. I didn't want to cheap out. <laughs> of course so not. Um, I went uh, to the mall in the city right across from where we worked at the Prudential Tower, and um, there was a Tiffany's in there, and I thought, you know, I'll, I'll just go in. I have no idea what I'm looking for, but I'll see what I can come up with. So I'm walking around Tiffany's, I'm looking in all the, you know, jewelry cases and stuff, and of course it's pretty pricey in there, as you may know. Um, so the, up You looked on, at me as if you didn't think I've ever been in there, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so the, up on the back wall were shelves, and there was a, a silver teapot up there, and I was like, that would be perfect, because Jody loves tea, and you know, probably several times a week, she will brew a pot of tea. So that, I want to get that. So I said, so eventually the um, woman came over that was working there, and she said, can I help you? Yes. Um, how much is the teapot? Uh, that that one right there. It was beautiful. It had a you know nice little fancy handle on it. It wasn't big, but it was nice. She said, that's sixty two fifty. I'm thinking to myself, Gee, sixty-two fifty. I can afford that. So I said, um, "Okay, I think I want to get that." And thinking in my mind, I'm going sixty-two fifty. That's not really spending that much on my wife. I said, uh, "What about like a cream thing, a creamer, and maybe a sugar bowl?" Uh, oh yes, we can. Yes, we have something that matches that teapot. I go, "Great! I want to take that too." So she goes and she gets everything, puts it on the counter. I'm looking it all over. And so I'm figuring in my mind, okay, if the teapot is sixty-two fifty, the creamer can't be much more than twenty-five, thirty bucks. The sugar thing's probably the same. So I'm barely over a hundred dollars now. So uh, I said, okay, I want to take those, and um, that's not, you know, that's not really enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, what else? What else can you show me? So she takes me over to this jewelry case, and there was a beautiful necklace in there. And I uh, asked her how much it was. The price escapes me now, but it was, you know, it was probably four hundred dollars, maybe. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a hero at Christmas with all this. So I said, okay. So um, what am I going to owe you now? And of course, the sixty-two fifty was six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> and the creamer and the coffee pot were probably two grand each. The necklace is four or five hundred dollars. <laughs> she names some ridiculous price. I'm in thousands of dollars, right? And I'm like, no. I, and I had to try not to look stupid, even though <laughs> I was really stupid. So I. So I said to her, and I knew I couldn't get all this, I said, I, I'm going to have to make a, a couple of changes here. Why don't we keep the necklace? I really, I don't think I can afford to keep the teapot and the creamer and the sugar thing. And, and anyway, it was uh, pretty embarrassing, to say the it. least. I love it. I could see it. As you were telling that story, I could see it as if I, if I was there. Yeah, well, you should have been there. And I would have been pointing at you, just <laughs> laughing my ass off. Yeah, <laughs> you know well. What I mean? Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. You know, one of your favorite things... Yes? I know, is food. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's probably <laughs> top three favorite things sure. for you. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, we don't you have want... to. We don't have to get an order of what your top three favorite things are. <laughs> we don't need to embarrass you. Well, I was a fan of uh, uh, what was the uh, the guy's name on Popeye that uh, that used to eat all the hamburgers? Wimpy. Wimpy. Is that it? Wimpy. <laughs> yes. Is that the right name? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I used to watch Popeye cartoons because uh, my dad was in the business and. 
he had a kid's show, and he used to show Popeye cocktails. And I loved Wimpy because he loved hamburgers, and I loved hamburgers. And so um, I think the line was, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. <laughs> and um, so that was that. That is today, still today, a hamburger is maybe my top favorite thing to oh, eat. Oh, yeah. Um, and, um, you know, being like being in New England, love fried clams. Oh, yeah. Could go to, you know, I could name two or three of the best places around for fried clams. Oh. And, uh, and then, you know, of course, I'm a steak guy. Oh, yeah. So, you know, any good steakhouse, I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go. Well, how about three places that are sort of buried treasure sort of uh, spots that maybe people have heard of, maybe they haven't, that you like of any type for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anything? Oh, okay. Well, um, let's do um, Helen's. Helen's. In uh, Concord. Yes. They have great breakfast there. Yes, they do. Very good. Um, and the, the wait staff is great. Yes. They're delightful. Yes. Um, it's a busy place. Yes. It's tough to get into, but it's very good. I know people there, so. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, as far as, like, steak places, uh, of course, Capitol Grill, when they burst on the scene, it's been quite a few years now, uh, they have excellent steaks and um a buddy of mine who used to work there has his own place now uh called the federal in uh, waltham mass and that's got great steaks too and um what am i leaving out those are, well those are some good ones yeah those are good ones those are good ones um and then uh for seafood which i'm not a gigantic fan of seafood but um uh, I do like fried clams, and my there's a couple of places up in Essex that are very good. Yes. The Clam Box, yes. which is actually in Ipswich, I believe. And then um, there's a place called Varnum's, which is in um, Essex, I think. And what's the big one right on the Ming Drag in Essex? Everybody goes there. And, of course, I can't remember it right now, but um, if I had my phone, I could look it up. We could call them. But uh, <laughs> I don't have that with me. But I know many of you out there are screaming at the speaker right now <laughs> what the name of the place is. <laughs> and uh, it escapes me. But anyway, though that's the, that town, Essex, Ipswich, the, for fried clams, excellent, excellent. So did you ever think in your lifetime you would see... Two things become legalized: betting and marijuana. <laughs> Did no, you ever, I never would have believed it. Well, betting. Uh, I mean, first of all, I don't gamble, so it didn't really matter to me. The marijuana thing, um, I never thought that would be legalized. I, you know, I thought that for the rest of my life I would be calling up Joe and. Seeing what was available, but uh, but no, and it, you know, and it's amazing. I I, I I hate to be a proponent of a drug like that, but um, you know, in all honesty, I would rather see my kids, who are all adults now, all twenty of them. Uh, <laughs> I would rather see them doing a little smoking of weed than getting all messed up on booze. Right. Because I think it's more dangerous. Alcohol is more dangerous. Yep. That's just my opinion. I, and maybe I'm wrong. Who knows if I'm right about that. But, I don't know what you're right or wrong about. But, you know, so who, who cares? We're just taking a walk at Walden Pond. <laughs> yes, that's right. right. So what, what does it yeah. matter? Beautiful day. The air is just crisp. I know. Right? It's just awesome. What's the most fun that... Wally Bryan has with his pants on. <laughs> well, as I mentioned, I love uh, boating. Yes. But that's only like a, a, a pair of short pants for boating. <laughs> right. But uh, with my pants on, no, you know, I, I, 
You know what, Buzz? I pretty much like everything. Yes. I just enjoy life. And I learned that from my dad, who just embraced living. Yeah. You know, working, playing, whatever it was, he was... He just appreciated every second he had. And I kind of follow along those lines. As long as I've known you, and I would see you almost every day, you know. Yes. And Wally, I used to love how Wally would come in to my <laughs> office, um, and he would say, what is it you do? <laughs> right? <laughs> and I would, you know, come up with some feeble attempt to <laughs> rationalize my mm -hmm. existence, and Wally would look at me and... He would just call BS on it. He'd be like, really? Come on. No. But I never, in my time of seeing you on a regular basis, and then subsequently, you know, I would see you less if I was traveling, but I would still see you. I don't recall you having a bad day. Now, you may have, but I don't recall you ever, no. like, exhibiting that behavior and well, wearing that. And we all have it. But. Look at the life I led. I mean, I, first of all, as a kid, I, I had like, I had a leave it to beaver life. You know, I was living in a pretty nice neighborhood and I went to a nice school. My friends were awesome. And then when I got into the radio business, which is something I wanted to do because my dad did it. And I, you know, went to work with him when I was little and thought, wow, this is cool. Play all your favorite songs and, you know, be a DJ. That was fun. And I worked with marvelous people in the radio business. I, I was, I've just been really lucky. I've really been lucky. I've, I've you know, the, my business partner in, in Boston, uh, Lauren Owens, is a phenomenal talent. <laughs> and he covered up all of my flaws. <laughs> and, you know, I would be you know talking about something that i didn't know what i was talking about and he would be able to jump in and pull me back out of the hole and um and then you know our subsequent teammates news people sports people voice talent you know i i just worked with just marvelous people i was just so lucky and it really um uh, certainly in the time that we worked in it um is really a tremendous business, right? I yeah. Mean, a tremendous yeah. business to be part of. I have a buddy whose son is in it now. Now, um, you know, we're getting a little older, you and I, but um, his son is like 40, maybe 45, and the business has changed a lot. You know, um, it, it, technically it's changed a lot, and... Plus, he doesn't even, like this kid, like I loved going into the studio and doing the show, you know, queuing up records and playing them and, you know, loading up the machines with the commercials that are coming up next. You don't do that anymore. Right. It's all computerized. You just hit the start button and it goes by itself. And I think that's kind of sad in a way. I do too. It's, it's not hands on. It's, it's not know? hands on because yeah, right. The mechanics of it were part of the magic of it. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. I would. I would agree completely. But taking it full circle, I think you know, talking to people who are around the business today, mm -hmm. um, there is less joy, and I think that you know we're walking here. There's tremendous joy. Uh, walking here with a friend uh that's part of the beauty of taking a walk uh the business that we just discussed you know there was joy you know uh, you you woke up and you were like let's take the day on you know there were tough moments certainly to get through right I yeah mean, like you know 9-11 sure just, uh, as, yeah. as an example but it was also that responsibility that you took seriously and it was joyful moments celebratory moments sad moments but um it really uh you know it, 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 the joy part uh, disappearing definitely makes me sad um but you know that's that's the way I things know. evolve but um and we're not the only business that has exactly. this issue exactly I mean. it's tough tough out there right. but but I take great joy in taking a walk. <laughs> I take great joy in taking a walk with a friend such as you. And this has just been 
spectacular. Oh yeah, this is wonderful. I, you know, I don't get to Walden Pond as much as I should. I, I live what 15 minutes from here, but um, Buzz, this is a great spot right here. This little trail you found. I think we got to. Oh look, the Thoreau House. The arrow goes that way. We got to go see if he's in. You want to see if he's over there? Yeah, let's or, go check him out. All right, Wally. Well, okay. Thank you for taking a walk with me. Oh, you. it was my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, I hope everybody has a fabulous end to this year and a great start to next year. Taking a Walk with Buzz Knight is available on Spotify, iTunes, and wherever podcasts are available.